Hello. And welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name's Jason and this is Chronic Pain Tuesday, number six. So it's the sixth session, the sixth week that I have done these sessions. And before I start, I'd just like to thank you for your support. That is uh, for all of those of you that leave comments, that like the videos that I do, and that subscribe, or have subscribed, or will subscribe. i just like to say thank you, and I really do appreciate it. Because without you, then there'd be no point in me doing this. Right, so, I was thinking earlier, what shall I do in this video? Um, what should I talk about? What pain relief technique shall I discuss? And um, I kind of had an option, with, well, I thought in my head, maybe it was between two different ones. Uh, there's so many to choose from. So I thought, okay, uh, basically thinking about sessions that I've used in the past with people one-on-one, -on -one, as well as videos that I've done that are online on, on the YouTube channel, on my website that you can listen to uh, and watch um, that I've done, you know, over the years. So, while I was thinking of that, I was on the way to the hospital to see my friend who has uh, really badly damaged her ankle. She had an open fracture in two places and she dislocated her shoulder, uh, her ankle as well. So it's facing the wrong way and you know, her foot. So she's been in hospital for a week. She's now having an operation. She just had an operation rather and she's you know on her way to recovery, hopefully. And she's on morphine. Uh, like every, every, every eight, eight seconds or something, the morphine drips uh, into her body or it's, you know, down, down the pipe. Something like that. So I was thinking about morphine. And I was thinking about, you know, the, the first things that you learn about pain, chronic pain, or any kind of pain really, when you study it. You know, like from a textbook, from a medical perspective, I mean. Um, and also some holistic books will talk about pain and they'll mention the you know the chronic pain pathways and stuff and you know but to make it simple i was just thinking about it and it's a very simple thing to explain there's a lot goes on <laughs> obviously there's a huge amount goes on uh you know involving the spinal cord and the neo receptors or i don't know whatever they're called but you know there's a hell of a lot going on but you know, but just automatically that happens, automatically. There's no conscious control over any of it really. Although hypnosis can help with certain aspects, including blocking certain physical sensations, which is what uh, hypnosis can do. It's not the only thing that can do that. Uh, acupuncture also can do it. Uh, I know we've spoken in other previous sessions about reflexology, massage, um, maybe Reiki, di different things that people, um, will, will be different for everyone. Uh, some people will use prayer, though, and it will give them relief, both emotionally and physically. And if you can get emotional relief, you will then get physical relief. So if you have, um, if you have a religion that you're involved in or that you, you know, uh, believe in, whatever the religion may be, sometimes maybe it's worth using that as a, as, as a technique. So I know that that, that might sound disrespectful towards a religion, but but as a tool, maybe, 
maybe the word tools the wrong one as well but but you know just as as a as a way to just allow that energy to change naturally meditation's another thing also that can reduce chronic pain um not just chronic pain but acute pain also but you need to know what the cause of the acute pain is we need to know the cause of all pain but i'm assuming that you wouldn't be watching videos on chronic pain relief if you didn't know the cause of the pain you need to know first you need to go to the doctor gp hospital nurse whatever it is you you where you go to get help for such things uh, you need to know the cause because then it doesn't matter if you remove pain if you know what the cause is you know as such as i've got my shoulder that's injured needs an operation i can relieve the pain in that and it doesn't matter at all because the pain is of no use to me i know what what the pain is i know what causes it it's basically the bone scraping against itself I know what it is I know what causes it I don't need it it's of no use as long as you're careful if you've got a, a knee um, damaged so if you've got a knee if you've got a knee that's damaged and it needs an operation for example the cartilage is damaged or needs replacing or has just been replaced whatever as long as you know what the cause is and as long as you respect that part of your body so not ignoring it to the point of walking on it if you know that actually you can't walk on it because it's damaged or it's healing and it needs to be you know elevated off the ground you know so if you're in bed and your legs elevated there's no reason to have that pain it's of no use because the warning it gives you is a pointless warning because you already know not to walk on it and if you're in bed and it's bandaged up or it's plastered up you can't walk on it and you're not going to forget that you've got a broken leg if it's in plaster so you don't need the pain it's, it's of no use Pain is just a warning, it's a reminder, it's letting you know that you know you need to take notice. Once you've taken notice, once you've taken action, once you've done what needs to be done, whether it's going to the doctors, hospital, whatever, to get it sorted, and if it's a broken bone, you've got it set, put in plaster, whatever it's needed to be done. Why would you need the pain? As long as you remember not to lift stuff up with your broken hand. If you can remember that, you don't need the pain. Because if you use a broken bone before it's set, you can damage it, obviously. That's why it's in plaster. So the pain is there to remind you, it's like a guard, like a fire guard in a sense, to remind you not to get too close to the fire because you'll get burnt. So it's a fire guard. I mean, I know a lot of people don't have fireplaces anymore, you know, because we're not in the 1800s, but fire guards, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of another uh, equivalent something where there's a guard on it so you don't touch the heat so that you you know a lot of safety mechanisms have guards on them like an engine or, or like a uh, a fan you know it's got metal in front of it so you can't put your finger into it why would someone want to put their finger into a fan i don't know but it's there as a guard to remind you to protect you but once you know it's there it's 
done. You don't need to think about it. You never have to worry about getting your finger caught into a fan because it's always got the guard on. You buy it with the guard and it's got the guard on the whole time so you're never able to be able to put your finger into it and, you know, hurt yourself. So you don't have to think about that. It's not, it's not something you need to worry about. So... I was thinking about that and the whole idea of needing pain and not needing it, appreciating it. It's an amazing thing to actually feel grateful for having pain or having the ability to feel pain. Because there are some people, as you may know, that are unable to feel physical pain. It's a, basically it's an illness um, or a disease, not a disease, but it's something that people are born with. Some people, I don't know what the name of it is called, um, but they can't feel physical pain. So some of these people who have this rare genetic or rare thing in their body means that they end up with burns from a very early age. You know, they end up with burns on their hands because they can't feel the heat. Maybe they touch stuff that's too hot. They can end up with broken bones without realizing it. And sometimes they can end up with dying earlier because they have infections and they don't know they've got the infections because they can't feel the pain. So they don't go to the doctor, they don't go to the hospital, you know, and maybe break a bone, don't realize it's broken. I'm walking around on it, get gangrene. Just, I know it's an extreme situation, but. Being able to feel physical pain is a lifesaver. It's very important and however annoying it is at times, and annoying is probably a very mild word to use, it's a lifesaver. And at the same time, flip it over and it's also unnecessary once it's been acknowledged and acted upon. So if you've been to the doctor and you've sorted out the issue that the pain situation is, so if you've got pain in your stomach, go to the doctor. Find out what's wrong with your stomach. Find out it might just be nothing. It might be something simple. But get it checked out. If you've got a recurrent condition uh, then you can use techniques to reduce that pain so if you know what the cause is uh, let's say you just had your appendix out maybe you can you know reduce some of that pain if you've got irritable bowel sy syndrome IBS if you know the cause of it and you know the symptoms and it's in the same place and it's all, it's, you know, it's definitely that that's causing it. You can just let it go. You can reduce it because it's not, need, not needed for you. But at the same time, it could be a warning. In a sense, warning your body not to eat certain foods. So by ignoring it and eating whatever you want, and if it causes your irritable bowel syndrome to flame up, then it's letting you know not to eat that stuff, you know. So there are, the body lets you know as well. So there's, it's, it's kind of a weighing it up situation. So pain is necessary. Pain is actually good. And it sounds like a stupid sentence. Pain is good. Of course, it's not. It's not nice. It's not. You know, not good in that sense. Not good as in. Uh, a lovely experience but it can save your life and it can save the life of a loved one you know if they listen to their pain if they go to the doctors if you've got a son or daughter or parents or brothers sisters and they say to you oh, I've got this keep having this pain in my chest 
you, you know, you're not good. What are you going to say to them? Be honest. What would you say? I think pretty much everyone's going to say the same thing. You're not going to say, well, uh, have you tried to do this to get rid of the pain? And, you know, go listen to this bloke on the internet. He can help you to reduce your pain. No. You need to go to the doctor or the hospital, depending on the severity of the pain. Find out the cause of the pain. Because, especially if it's in the chest, it, it could be totally unrelated to the heart, but it could be a torn muscle or just a strained muscle. It, could, it just could be indigestion, you know, heartburn. But get, you know, find out. That's what you'd say to someone you loved, someone you cared for. So you need to do it for yourself as well, because you're as important as anybody else on the planet. You're just as important. In fact, you're more important to yourself because you're with yourself 24 hours a day from the minute you're born to the minute you're no longer here. No one's with you that whole time, every second of every day. You're like, you got you kind of like your own twin, you know? Imagine if you had your own twin, I know some people have got twins, but if you've got a twin and there's that bond that you won't ever have with anyone else and you're identical, and you, but in this case, you have the same thoughts, same feelings, the same everything, and you travel through your life and you age at the same rate because you're the exact same age as each other, because it's you. So you think the idea, you've got that twin. So that twin has a problem, maybe a pain in the chest, or that twin is um, feeling sad about something or feeling, uh, you know, feeling ugly. So they're saying to you, oh, I'm ugly. And you need to treat that person. You know, what would you say to your twin? You say, no, you're not. Um, you might have to lie, but in my case but we said no well you're not ugly you know you're we're all different we all have different qualities and you you want to make your twin feel not feel good but just stop them from feeling bad and get give them a reality you know so like, actually no don't be horrible to yourself it's, it's not nice and you know you're hurting yourself by saying that stuff to yourself and But then realize actually that twin is us. We're always with ourselves. So we need to say that to ourselves. And I'm not going to go down the road of emotional well-being and stuff because that isn't what this video is about. But everything is about that, you know, ultimately. If you sort out that aspect of your life, if you can, you know, love yourself more, not in a... Um, uh, I don't know, not in like a, oh, I'm wonderful kind of way and I'm perfect and I'm better than everyone else and none of that stupidness. Just love yourself. Just be kind to yourself, you know? And all the other aspects of your life will change, will become more sorted. So the idea of you're walking through life hand in hand with your twin, but that twin is you. So how would you treat your twin? However you would treat your twin, however kind and loving and supportive you would be to your twin, brother or sister, be that way towards yourself. Can you imagine if you did that, how much your life may change? And the thing about that is, in relation to chronic pain, which is what this video is about, when you think about life in that way, it changes things. It's like a slight change, it's, it's like a fine tuning, but it changes how you think. And when you get 
um, to that point in your mind when you actually hear something and we all get that sometimes where you hear something and it stays with you it like just sinks right into your head and it stays with you forever and unfortunately you know there's been bits in the past which was helpful and some stuff that hasn't been helpful but the more of those helpful things that sink in and stay with you forever like traveling through life from the second you were born to the second you're no longer here 24 hours a day each and every second with your twin brother or sister even though they're not real you know it's unless of course you do have a twin brother and sister but you know it's like a it's you a mirror image of yourself And when you go to see that, say to that person, that twin of yours, you know, you need to love yourself. You need to be kinder to yourself. Let it go. You know, it's not worth fighting for. Things are not worth, it's not worth getting upset about anymore. It's in the past. You can't change that. Um, you just need to let it go. Accept that not everybody, you can't change, you can't control everybody and that what everyone does and what everyone says and however however everyone thinks you can't control that they're gonna think and feel and say and do whatever they do that's their life that's their stuff that's their um, journey or whatever you want to call it and then imagine someone saying that to you and say well Actually, I'm saying it to this twin, but if I say it to myself, how does it feel? Does it fit? And it's like trying on some new clothes. You can just test it. Try and, I mean, I've got this shirt that I don't normally wear, and um, I've got a t-shirt underneath, so it's stretching it a bit, so I look like I've... Uh, well, below there, it sort of expands a bit. But that's okay. What different types of clothes would you like to test, to try on? What different ideas would you like to test and try on for yourself? Just see if it fits. And that changes how you feel not just emotionally but also physically changes how you see your situation so with the chronic pain for example maybe you see yourself in a different light because you've got that love that increased love that increased self-esteem that's there and because you've got that, because it's increased, as we were saying right at the beginning of the session, with hypnosis or with, let's just say with talking about stuff, because that's what hypnosis is. It's just talking. It's just me talking, you listening, or you talking and me listening, depending on who's doing the hypnosis, you know. It's just words and ideas. And then whatever emotions, whatever thoughts, whatever images you get in your mind can affect how you feel and also change your life. And that happens anyway. That can happen without somebody talking to you. That can happen by your own thoughts and your own words and your own mind, which is why it's so important for those words in your own mind to be pleasant words. And if they're not pleasant, to have the ability to catch yourself when you're being negative or cruel to yourself. And then ask yourself, would you say that to your twin brother or sister? And if you wouldn't, 
then like catch yourself so okay I'll get rid of those I'm gonna let those words go those thoughts go let those emotions go acknowledge that they're there but why add to it why increase those feelings why like hitting yourself when you're down why why keep doing that I mean when I used to see counseling clients when I was counseling a few years back I came across an idea and it, well, I thought up a I thought up an idea and I, again I don't know if it's my idea or if it's someone else's idea I might have read it somewhere but I used it anyway as far as I'm aware it's just something that I kind of came up with but you know I'm not sure but my idea was I said to the clients who was had a lot of negative self-talk which I do believe is quite a common thing quite common practice amongst us humans to have that negative self-talk being cruel to ourselves so ultimately ultimately what it is we're being cruel to ourselves it's like why would we do that why would you do that so i thought to myself okay how would i counsel somebody who is doing that what what would come you know what came into my mind and i was with a client and it just came out and i said well and this was a specifically vicious self-hatred real horrible stuff um that this lady was saying to herself and it's especially especially um prevalent in suicidal people with suicidal um intentions it's like the hatred towards themselves is can be just is beyond um the ability to really fathom really to really kind of understand from an outside perspective someone else's thoughts to be like that why someone would be so cruel to themselves so i said to this this lady i won't obviously go into what she was her situation it wasn't suicidal but it was uh, definitely a lot of uh, horrible thoughts and talking to herself calling herself names calling herself stupid and an idiot and um no good and worthless and all, all that horrible horrible stuff and um, and I just said to her, would you say that to a small child? Would you walk up to a small child, you know, a five-year-old child, a uh, boy or girl, and would you say to them, you know, ideally, would you say it to someone that you care about? Like if you've got a niece, or if you've got a son or a daughter, or, you know, or grandchild or whatever, would you, would you go up and say to them, you're useless, you're ugly, you're worthless, you're all that stuff. And she said, no, of course not. And I said, well, why would you say it to yourself then? Aren't you just as important as that small child? Aren't you just as precious a human being as anybody else, whatever, whatever their age they are? Isn't everybody precious, you know, in their own way? And she looked at me. And in that moment, I could just see the one thing I could see. I can't read people's minds, and nobody can, even if people think they can. Um, maybe some people can, I don't know, but I don't believe that. But I think we're brought up to think that we can read what people are thinking by their facial expressions or their body language and. I've come to the conclusion the only way you're ever going to know what somebody else is thinking is by asking them and even then they may lie or they may not want to tell you or they may make something up 
But I could tell by looking at this lady's face that in that moment, and for a few seconds anyway, afterwards, I couldn't tell what she was thinking, but I could tell what she wasn't thinking. She wasn't thinking that she was ugly. She wasn't thinking that she was stupid or that she was horrible, that she was useless. She wasn't thinking any of those cruel things towards herself. It was a jolt, it was a, um, a parting of waves in a sense, kind of an idea, like here. It's like, wait a minute, what happened there? I didn't go into the twin thing because that's kind of a, more of a newer thing that I've been thinking about, but the small child, would you say that to a small child? And you may think, oh, what's this got to do with chronic pain? And It's got a lot to do with your whole life. And you know, some people, chronic pain, they will say to you, or they feel that chronic pain is their whole life. It's very unlikely that anyone's going to watch these videos if they've just got a sore thumb and you know they've like hit a thumb with a hammer. Excuse me. Oh, can't believe I just burped on a video. I don't know if I've ever burped. Ten years. I think it's the first time I've ever done a belch on a video. Sorry about that. Um, but you know, if someone's got a thumb, the black thumb now or whatever due to a hammer, they could listen to hypnosis. I mean that's a situation where you could listen to hypnosis and you could reduce the pain and you wouldn't need to, you know, you could, you know whether or not your thumb's broken. Basically it's, I think most people can tell whether it's just a bruise or if it's broken. Um, what I've noticed with broken bones is if I broke my hand and I broke my wrist and my rib, my rib as well, um, I think I broke my nose when I was a kid. But the initial impact, the initial pain that you have, um, stays, it doesn't subside. So, I remember when I broke my hand, I when I broke my wrist, fell out of the bath. Normally be like ah oh, and then eventually after maybe five or ten minutes it would reduce maybe after a few seconds you know but it depends on how bad the and then it would reduce you know slightly even maybe I'm not to completely just like oh it's okay now but just reduce but with a broken bone or fracture or something in my experience, the pain stays at the same level, doesn't reduce at all, there's no reducing. Um, that's a clue that you need to get to the hospital and get it sorted, or wherever you need to go, get it x-rayed and sorted out. But go to the hospital or doctors anyway if you need to. But a lot of the reason I do these videos is for people that are in serious chronic pain um, and they feel, I know some people do feel that it's like their whole life is based around the pain. That's why I do these videos, that's why I used to do free hypnosis for people with chronic pain. No one ever came to me with a slight injury, broken bone that was healing, anything like that because just most people would just take pain tablets, wait, you know, because with a broken bone, it's, you know, the pain subsides quite a lot after a fairly short time, you know, it might be a week or two and it's just, you know, gradually subsides. But some with a chronic pain condition or some with uh, an illness or a disease uh, which involves pain. It's a different matter, whether it's cancer, whether it's um, uh, multiple sclerosis, uh, it can be all, so many, I can't name everything, but so many different um, conditions that 
involves pain. Well, arthritis, of course, I don't know why I didn't mention that. Arthritis, um, so some things which cause constant pain or what feels like constant pain. And then people get to the point where they feel it's always the same. It's always, always the same level of pain, but no, no feeling ever stays the same. And that's what sometimes we forget that actually we don't always feel the same. I've talked to people that have had severe depression and I've been with them laughing for 30 minutes, laughing, and they were laughing, they were really proper laughing. And then at the end they're saying, yeah, I'm miserable all the time. Always, you know, stay in one state and that's this depression, nothing else. And I've already shown me that that's not true. Actually, they do have different states. They're just differences they don't remember. They don't recall that. They don't log it. They don't recognize it. Because they've got that in their brain that, that the only state they have is depression. Because it's so powerful. Because it's so uh, life... Um, it just takes up the energy, sucks out the energy of other people as well. I think depression can, if you're around people that are depressed, it can be difficult for everybody involved. And um, I know I've got a lot of experience with depression and I've also had seriously depressed friends as well. And I know it's difficult uh, for everybody. With chronic pain, can lead to depression in fact I think it's be hard to find anybody that's got a, a long-term chronic pain that hasn't been depressed with it I think it's like a hundred percent depression at some point with different levels because depression does have different levels some people have different coping systems strategies etc so as I said these videos these or well, my target audience and it's not just just those people but I just know that there's millions of people out there in the world um, that really are suffering but that feeling in their physical feeling is affecting their mental states, which is normal. It's a normal thing to happen, but it doesn't have to happen in that way. It can reduce. So it's not nothing abnormal about feeling depressed about having chronic pain. In fact, it's the most normal thing in the world. I think it would be quite weird not to have that feeling at some point. Um, But depression can make the pain worse. But sometimes having emotional feelings can reduce the physical pain, which is kind of weird because sometimes people can't have both at the same time. So to have the emotional pain actually takes away the physical pain. But there's no need to have either of them at the levels that they have been. There's ways to reduce them. And one of those ways is to just love yourself. And I don't mean it in a flippant way. It's like, just love yourself. And you're like, oh, love myself. That's, that's what I'll do now then. It takes work. And loving yourself, I don't mean it in a in a kind of new age hippie-ish although hippie not really new age is it? it's been around since the 40s but um or 50s but yeah the in a real terms like real like loving yourself the way that you would love the person you love most in the world whether it's your your wife your husband your mother your father your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister, your best friend. I think I've covered 
most of the things you know whoever it is in your life or even if they're no longer here whoever it was in your life the person that you love or have loved most in your life without getting into baggage concerning maybe relationship breakdowns or whatever that might have occurred but just think about someone now in your life that you love that you really care about and then turn it flip it flip it on yourself see yourself so see that person so you've got like a board a picture of that person and a picture of yourself on the other side so see the picture of the person notice how you feel notice how how much caring how much love how much you know all the positive things you feel towards that person now flip it over and see yourself and notice what what difference there is notice the change notice what difference i flip it back again and just notice how you feel about that person the warmth you feel maybe in your chest um, the love you know genuine fondness the genuine love the someone that you'd you know do almost anything for to help now flip over and see yourself flip it back and see that person the person that you know you absolutely adore and as you look at them as you see that person in your mind just feel how you physically feel notice that part of your body that was maybe causing you chronic pain maybe in the past before you listen to this session just notice how it's changed how it's reduced just even if it's just in this moment notice how it feels differently when you focus on that person and how you feel about that person imagine what it would be like to be that person to have someone feel like that towards you and flip it over see yourself and having that feeling towards yourself knowing that it's you you're having that feeling towards yourself you're having that feeling towards you and just notice how you feel in your body notice how you feel in your chest in your stomach your shoulders your back of your neck your head your arms your legs your feet your toes your back just turn over again seeing that person that you care about that you're deeply fond about and just see it see that person and notice how you feel in your mind notice how you emotionally feel as you see that person just notice how good it feels inside you know notice the stress levels are reduced and flip it over again and see in yourself notice what happens to your stress levels do they stay the same or do they continue to reduce because that connection now has changed As you feel different about yourself, flip it over again, see that person, seeing yourself, and see that person. And what you can do is do like a sideway. You kind of see half of that person, half of you, kind of mixing together. mixing so it's kind of you can't really see what the difference is is that that love and that kindness that well-being that positivity you know that wishing well wishing that person well wishing the best hoping the best for that person and you see yourself notice how it changed notice how you feel different and continue to see yourself in your mind and feel how you feel 
right now. And know that you deserve the love that you feel. You deserve to be kind to yourself. Because when you are kind to yourself and when you say nice things to yourself, you feel different. You physically feel more relaxed, naturally. It just happens, just the way it is. And this is a continuous progression. These feelings can change and become stronger each day. You can listen to this and listen to it and you can keep listening to your board if you're not already bored, that is. But the fact of the matter is changes occur because that idea has gone into your mind. Like a new coat or a new, you know, item of clothing that you tried on now. Yeah, feels nice. So I'm going to, I'm going to keep this and just see how it feels. The thing is, being kind to yourself isn't something that you ever give up. Once you discover it, it stays with you forever because the outcome, the positive outcome is immediate. Sleeping better, feeling physically better, feeling happier feeling more relaxed, less stressed, less stress builds up. It doesn't get a chance to build up because actually you're just allowing it just to go. You're allowing yourself to feel good for no good reason. There's no, you don't need an excuse to love yourself. There's no, no reason for it. You don't need an excuse. You don't need permission from anybody else you don't even need permission from yourself. You just do it because you can. Because you have control over the words you say to yourself. And that in turn reduces any physical discomfort that you had before. It makes things more manageable. It releases something. That energy that you had before that was perhaps negative, still energy that you have at your disposal. It's just it's no longer being used for negativity. It can be used for healing. It can be used for just causing your body to relax, the different parts of your body just to feel calm. It can allow your brain, the parts of your brain responsible for pain signals to just do their magic and providing you don't need to be aware of that part of your body and the physical pain and providing you've got, you know, medical attention and it's all been fine and you know that you don't need to be reminded of it anymore because it's, you know, it's being taken care of. It's of no use to you anymore. Therefore, that part of your brain responsible for the pain can just put a little block in. Just block it. Just allow you to feel more comfort, more relaxation in your body and in your mind because one leads to the other. The more relaxed your mind is, the more relaxed your body is, the more relaxed your body is, the lower the pain is, to the point where it reduces and reduces. And the lower your pain is, the more relaxed your brain is and your mind is, and emotionally, and the more relaxed your body is then, and so on. And it's a continuous cycle of relaxation, comfort, and kindness and also being kind to that part of your body where the physical sensations that may be 
uh, have been unpleasant for you in the past, you can still love that part of your body as well. You can thank that part of your body because it's part of you. Learning to love all of you, whether you know, whether you like it, you know, whether it's something that you want to keep or not, you know. Just learning to accept how you are, changing those things that you can, if you choose to. But only do that. Do that for yourself, not for anybody else. And those things you are unable to change for whatever reason, relax, be kind to yourself, be honest, enjoy your life, enjoy being you, enjoy being your genuine self, enjoy laughing at the world and laughing at silly things if, if you want laughing at anything that you want to laugh at just have fun let go try not to take things too seriously allow those words that you say to yourself to be gentle Allow the tone to be gentle. Because maybe you've got an inner voice that actually is quite harsh. Maybe the words aren't so bad, but the tone is harsh. Like you're telling yourself off. But actually the words are not being, you know, it might, be, if you're saying to yourself, oh, it's sunny outside. Mm. Even though you just said it's sunny outside, it's not a bad word, but it's not a bad, bad sentence. But the tone, so if you can find a nice tone, just relax it. Make it gentle, maybe make it slower. Give yourself permission to be kind to yourself. Because this does have a huge effect on how you physically feel. Massive effect. More than I'll ever be able to really explain. Although I've tried to explain it a bit. So starting with just one thing, notice what you're saying to yourself. Imagine you had a twin would you say that to your twin? Would you say it to a small child? If not, and also, what would you like somebody else to say to you? What kind of kind words, you know, lovely sentences, something, um, you know, a beautiful compliment maybe, something uplifting, what would you really love someone to say to you? Or what is it something, maybe a memory of something that somebody has said to you and your response was um, to feel wonderful inside, you know, to feel happy, to smile, to, you know, really, because that changes how you physically feel in an instant. It can be more powerful than, than any kind of drug like morphine or anything like that. Because you have the clarity as well. Your mind is not clouded. And it's, it's real. It's a real, it feels real. Pleasure. So whatever it is that you'd love someone else to say to you or that someone else has said to you in the past that, that you know, had you feeling wonderful, what, say it to yourself. 
Why not do that? Why not say it to yourself now? Why not say it to yourself every day? And mean it. And notice how it feels. Notice how you feel different. Just in the same way that you feel different every time you hear my voice or see my face on a video uh, or listen to me on an audio. Something changes. So no matter what mood you are in for that day, whatever situation you're in, you listen to my, you hear my voice and there's that connection. It's just a standard thing that happens. We all have a connection and that connection at the very, very least relaxes you. You feel more relaxed instantly as soon as you see me or hear my voice because it's what you're used to and it's just a natural thing. In the same way, if you've got a grandchild and you see a grandchild smiling, you feel good inside, naturally. I'm not comparing myself to the smile of your grandchild. I'm just saying that there's a connection between, a positive connection between watching my videos and how you feel. And I'd like you to have that for yourself, to have a positive connection between how you feel when you look in the mirror. How you feel about yourself when you're in your own mind just thinking. I'd like you to have that positive connection from now onwards where you just say nice things to yourself. And it's not about lying to ourselves, making out and pretending that we're something we're not and you know any of that stuff. It's not like an ego boost. It's just honesty. You are an amazing person. You've helped many people through your life. You have changed other people's lives and you may not even be aware of it or ever find out about it. But other people's lives have been affected by your actions, by your positive actions, by your kindness over the years. So why not tell yourself that? Why not remind yourself of how amazing you are? And by doing so, you will physically feel more relaxed and calmer, easier day in and day out, every day more and more relaxed and easier to do because it's just natural and it becomes, I guess, habitual. Where you change the negativity to positivity. And it's not false positivity. It's real. You're just being honest to yourself. And you're choosing to say nice things to yourself. And you're choosing to catch yourself whenever you say something that's harmful or cruel to yourself, you can say, wait a minute, no, uh, uh. Would you say that to a small child or would you say that to your twin? Would you say that to your grandmother or your grand grandfather or your, you know, your mother, whoever, someone that you care about deeply, would you say that to them? If it's not good enough for them, it's not good enough for you. So that's the end of this session really. I've covered a fair bit of stuff and I haven't necessarily done a technique as it were, like I did in the last session. But what I have done is, I hope you realize what I've done and it's about how you feel ultimately. How do you feel now compared to how you felt at the beginning of this session? That's what this is all about. That's all this is about, is about changes in your perception of how you physically feel and about reducing any physical discomfort and increasing physical com comfort, you know, whether it's pleasure, whether it's uh, emotional pleasure, whether it's reducing any um, stress levels. 
but it's about sort of self-esteem. It's about actually being honest with yourself. It's about caring about yourself. So that's it. That's the end of this Chronic Pain Tuesday, number six, I think is number six. And I will see you next Tuesday with another video. I appreciate uh, you watching this. I hope it's uh, useful and uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.